Greetings and welcome to Mount Olympus. I am Hercules Invictus, and today I'm proud to bring you Living Elenismos with Tony Merzwicki. Greetings and welcome, Tony. How are you today? Doing really well, Hercules. How are you today? I'm doing incredibly awesome, and I'm looking forward to your conversation with uh, Star. Yes, um, we're very pleased to have Star and Ravenhawk on the show today to talk about a rather disturbing incident that occurred on Saturday, July 16th, 2022, when the Witches Fest USA event held in Astor Place, New York City, which she had organized, was invaded by a group of evangelical Christians. Um, hold on. The disruption of a religious event should be of obvious interest to members of all religious minorities. I blogged about the incident for Pathios. Heather Green wrote about it for the Washington Post and Fox News commented on Ms. Green's article, sensationalizing it in the process. It should be noted that the Christians referred to in this interview, my blog and Ms. Green's article are obvious fanatics. It should be understood that any anti-Christian remarks refer to fanatical individuals rather than mainstream Christians, many of whom are progressive and tolerant. The New York City Wiccan Family Temple website outlines Star's background. Star is a Trini Canadian who fell in love with the magical arts at a tender age, became an independent scholar practicing witchcraft in all its many facets of magics from around the world, as she considers it all belonging to her craft. She is the founder and elder of the New York City Wiccan Family Temple, the first witch temple in New York City, ordaining its priests and priestesses to be licensed state reverends and founder of the WFT Academy of Pagan Studies, the first witch school in New York City, formed and runs Witch Fest USA, a pagan fair, and formerly ran the New York City Witches Masquerade Ball from 2005 to 2019. She's also the cone owner of charmbystar.com, which is a witchcraft e-shop for those of discerning taste and needs. She has been giving lectures and teaching workshops related to witchcraft and its many practices at witch events, universities, and colleges for over 40 years. Star co-created the Journey to the Realm of the Underworld Graveyard Mysteries designed to be a therapeutically magical experience for each person. She's a reverend, high priestess, teacher, and elder intuitive witch. She currently lives in New York City with her son. Her mottos are, no one person knows everything, so always keep learning and free your mind, educate it, and the rest will follow. Star, thanks for making yourself available and coming on the show. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you. That was a great introduction. It's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> a mouthful. <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm doing really well. I just wanted to give people an idea of exactly who you were and what okay. we're going to be talking about. But um, I'm actually intrigued by your second motto, uh -huh. which seems to be a reference to Free Your Mind by the band In Vogue, where right. the chorus states in part, free your mind and the rest will follow, be colorblind, don't, don't be so shallow. So just out of curiosity, why is this song special to you? Um, it's not, I mean, I guess the song is in its way, but it, it's just... It's very enlightening. It's um, it's political and it's in its in its um, in its wordings, um, and the way that they present it in the song, um, it, it's telling people so many things at the same time. Even though people dance to it and or they love the music with it and everything else, um, they're still telling you something that means a lot. And if if people would just do that, a lot of things would fall into place. Um, and I, although sometimes you begin to think that words just mean nothing anymore because people just don't do that anymore. People either they don't read or they don't understand or misinform or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, education is a big deal. And as we see, it's being at present time, it's being demolished um, and dumbed down and many different things going on but yeah it frees the mind it educates it and the rest of the world is doing that and the united states just seems to not be doing that it's the opposite kind of a thing so it's kind of sad to see it, it is sad to see educational standards in this country um are slowly dropping off we're being left behind 
Yeah, big time. So, yeah. So getting to the matter at hand, I actually have a personal interest in the evangelical Christian invasion of the Witches Fest event as I was actually in attendance and documented everything with photographs. Right. I was one of the presenters the day before and the day after the event when it was virtual. I assume that you paid for a permit and you complied with all the New York City laws pertaining to public events? Yes. Um, for, for New York yeah. City, um, you have to apply with SAPO. Um, it's the New York City permit office. Then you have to um, apply with the community board and you have to apply um, and the community board has to either um, uh, approve it or, or, or decline it. And for, for eight years, they declined it. And, well, I should say seven years. The eighth year, for some reason, every, each of that year, when I tried to get them to approve us, they declined it for seven years. On the eighth year, they said, we don't see why you were not given this permission over and over. Um, so we are giving you permission from now on forever. And I was like, um, okay. I didn't quite trust them. So the, the ninth year I showed up again and they're like, we told you, you're good. I said, yeah, but I just wanted to see for myself kind of a thing, you know, but they finally approved this and they actually said that they love us in the, in the neighborhood and they love that a lot of them from the community board comes to our event. Um, so it's nice to see them, in, you know, embodying it and, and coming to it and enjoying it, um, you know, so... And then of course we have, so there's a permit there, there's a permit with the city, and then we have to get the sound permit from the police department, which we have to pay for as well. Right. So, and they cannot give two permits, two sound permits for the same location. So they obviously did not have, the Christians that is, did not have a permit for their blow horns and their amplification because they, they were not allowed to have an ampl uh, a permit for that same location. You know, um, one thing that's blown me away, I've, I've been in New York for a few weeks now, and I'm, I'm blown away by, by the diversity of the place. It's right. one of the most multicultural places I've ever, I've ever visited. And each community has its own religions, its own culture, its own practices. So in a way, the event that you're putting on is a celebration of right. at least some of the diversity that we have here in New York City. So, right. you know, kudos to you for putting it on. I think it's a it's, it's an absolutely wonderful event that deserves to continue on. Right, right. I intend to. No one's moving me off. So Very cool. Not, not having it, not having it, no. I fought yeah. too long and hard for it, so I'm not giving it up. Absolutely. Okay, so the evangelicals were loud, obnoxious, and disruptive. Did they have a right to be in, in attendance? Were they no. breaking any laws? Yes, they, um, well, I don't know about the laws, but they were not supposed to be there and within the space of the, because we rented both the sidewalk and the street. So anybody on the sidewalk would have to be people either walking straight by, you know, not being part of it or people wanting to be part of it. Um, to have them inside of, of the street itself, they were as well as on the, um, when they followed us you know, from where we had the, the workshops on the end corner, they were so loud, we moved it, the workshops over to closer to the middle of the street, um, further down, they followed us there and they were louder again. So they were, there's got to be laws they were breaking because in the past, when we called the police, they immediately came and they immediately had them remove themselves and gave them a, a distinction of where they can be and they could not come any further than that. So this was the very first time where we, the, the police officers came and they did nothing. They actually treated me as if I was the one invading the space, as if I was the one in the wrong. You, you witnessed it yourself, pushing me back a little bit and everything. And I had two women who stood behind me that just let me know. And they turned, as I turned around and they touched my shoulder, they said, we're here because we see how they're treating you. And they stood behind me and they're like, we're letting them know we're standing right with you and they stood there and then you were next to me as well and we couldn't get them to listen to us they were listening yeah. to the to the to the christians um and it's just it was just out of sorts it just it did, like we were in a dystopian world it was switched around they had the rights and we did not they had the permits and we did not that's the way it felt 
Th that's my recollection exactly. And I remember when they interviewed the loud guy with the megaphone, um, he lied and said that nobody had a problem with him being there. So I took a step forward and I was next to the, the bigger of the two police officers. And I said, he's lying. Nobody wants him here. And he actually pushed me away with his arm. That's what that's, he did. And he did the same thing. Yep, he did. I saw that. I mean, that, that's did. the closest that I've ever come to police brutality. I mean, you know, he was very gentle, but still it was, you know, I was definitely pushed away. But right, um, right. I, I, I couldn't handle him lying to the police. Nobody right, wanted right. him there. Anyway, yeah, he um, said he was not disrupting anything and nobody was um, nobody was upset that he was there or something to that effect. And we, we were, were like, that's not true. Yeah, we were all yeah. upset. And, and that incident that you talked about with um, with the workshop space actually being moved, I saw that happen where the tent was picked up. Or there was a person yeah. at each of the corners. The tent was moved to move away from them. And then the guy with the megaphone and a few of his hangers on, his minions followed him and they kept disrupting. Yeah. The, the yeah. Event, I mean, we we wanted to have an event where people could be informed and entertained. Everyone was having a wonderful time. I mean, yeah. Anyway, I, I'm, I don't want to hijack this. This is supposed to be you talking. Not no, 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 talking, but you were but there. Was, you witnessed it. What happened it. was so, very, very wrong. You know, yeah. I, I like the fact that you're saying it. You're saying exactly what I am saying because we were both there witnessing the whole thing. Him pushing you back. He pushed me back a bit too. It was just like we felt like we were the ones that were in the wrong and didn't. And I'm, I, I'm looking at the police officer and I said, look at the permit. Look what it says on it. He refused to, to look at it. He absolutely refused to look at the permit or anything with it. And then finally he said, it's freedom of speech. And they both walked away. And that was it. I know. So I, I remember you patiently explaining to the evangelicals that our community in general doesn't believe in a Satan or a devil or a hell. But all your lecturing fell on deaf ears. Yep. Do you think that there's a way to actually have dialogue with fanatical evangelicals? I, I doubt it. I don't think of it. I honestly, it, it's like talking to a wall. I don't think we would be able to, to get through to them or, or, or in any way they have to be, which is why now I am legally pursuing it where getting a restraining order or an order of protection or something because they're not going to listen. They're just not because they are determined according to them and on their website to make sure that Satan does not get rooted in, in, in the community. And I'm like, you know, that's your bag. You guys created Satan. You can hold on to him tightly. It's not our bag. You know, yes, whoever believes in it, that's their prerogative and that's their choices. You don't have any say over that either. But you heard me say to them that it is your thing. You hold on to him and walk away with him. You know, we don't want yeah. any part of it. Leave us alone. And they kept on. And then when I got really angry after a while, one of the, the women said, why are you getting so angry? I said, why am I getting so angry? Because every year you guys do this. You come here and you disrupt us. You, in, you invade us. You proselytize. You do everything to make sure that you think you're going to save us. Save us from what? Do we look like we're drowning? Are we in a pool with water covering us over? You know, I said, yes, I am angry because I'm done. Enough. You know, you you. First of all, they are all younger than we are. What makes you think at our ripe older age that we need your help to be saved? Seriously, we're not young people at your ages. That's your bag and your things. And I always that, think of fanatics like that as being so dysfunctional with whatever happened to their lives so badly that now they need to be saved. That's them. I, nothing traumatizing like that happened to me. They are the ones that's traumatizing me. That's it. You know, that is so true. And I'm, I've been saying much the same thing for many years. And I'm so glad to hear someone else say it. I mean, at our age, we, I find it insulting to have a young, younger person come up to me and tell me that my belief system is invalid and right. I should follow their belief system. Right. These are people right. who, who haven't lived. Um, they don't have backgrounds in theology. Um, they're just versed in... Yeah, in the, whatever verses their, their preacher gives them and that's it. Um, I, I noticed that you had conversations with some of them. Did they mention any of their beliefs? Like, do they differ from those of mainstream Christianity? Because they appear to be far more fanatical than the Christians I normally come against. Yeah, I, have, I have friends who are Christians who are lovely people, 
they're tolerant and everything else, but these people were different. Right. They were right. really aggressive, pushy, and they just wanted yeah. to shut us down. Right, right. And that's what they intended to do, to shut us down. Um, and, you know, like, call the cops. We don't care. And when the cops came, then they, they, they lied. You're such a Christian, yeah. but you outright lied, you know. Um, you know, and, and one of them even said, well, look at this. You see, we're bringing down the rain. And I said, oh, so you are a witch. You're predicting the rain that's coming down. Now you're saying you're a witch. Witch, witch, you're a witch. I, I kept repeating. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I said, and she was like, stop saying I'm that. I said, but you are a witch. You just predicted the rain, you know. So whatever it was, I knew they were not going to really listen, you know. And when at, they were taken at one point with the corner, um, one of the men said women are only there to be breeding and things like that. And the women with them were nodding their heads. And I was, that was so appalling to me. I was just like floored. And that we are watching this and I'm realizing really there is no talking to them. So that's why I, I don't think there's anything that we can do verbally other than to go to legal recourse that we're going to go through now. You know, Women have gone through decades, if not centuries, of battle to obtain rights, to, to have equality, to be able to vote, to, to have jobs, be treated as the equal of men. And yet these women, these evangelical women, seem to be quite happy to go back to just being barefoot pregnant in the kitchen. That was the expression right. we used to use, use right. back in Australia. They're just breeding factories. I mean, right. what sort of life is that? What, when he said, you know, that, why should they be subservient to their men? Wow, it's, yeah, it's totally yeah. wrong. He said it to, to Daryl and a couple of other people, and Daryl came and told me. And Daryl said, when he said it, he just had to turn away because he, he could not believe that this man said that, and that the woman next to him nodded their heads. He was appalled for them. So I, I'm, you know, amazed. And it, if you look on their website, there's not one female there. It's all, all, no, I shouldn't say that. I think there is one, um, one woman only. But the rest of them who were there with us, none of their pictures were there on their website, though, are all the men who were there, they were all on their website. You know, the Bible was written in Bronze Age times, a time, a patriarchal time when, when men ruled, women were second-class citizens, slavery was totally permitted, times have changed yeah you know there is no more slavery men and women should be treated as equal all minority groups should be should be treated as equal i mean what they're preaching is totally out of step with the modern right. age as i see it right right it's it is totally out of step it's like literally watching the handmaid's tale or, or some dystopian you know whatever it is i i have no idea it's like they fell through time but you are you are correct with a lot of things. I have friends that are Christian. My mom is Christian, okay? And yes, she thinks that witchcraft is is, is, is satanic, but she does not say it to me, um, you know? And I just, you know, once I told her that, you know, I have not changed, have I in any way with you and I? And she said, no, I said, but then stop judging me. I don't judge you on your religion. You don't judge me on mine. And I have friends who are Christians who are very um, progressive and they are they are supportive of what I, I do and don't do. You know, I mean, it's, it's my business and like that just like theirs is their own. But there are, I don't, I'm not even sure what to call it because there are the fanatics like them and there are those that do walk around telling you all the time, Jesus saves, Jesus loves you, Jesus. And you're like, okay. Like I have seen people do that with me because they look at my pendant and they will say that. And some of them, I see them constantly and they keep repeating it to me. And I would finally say something like, would you please stop? I don't go around telling you, let's share my, 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 my book of shadows with you or anything. And they're like, no, I'm trying to save you. I said, for what? From what? You don't have that right. So to me, there's a lot, it seems a lot of times as if there's a lot more of the fanatical types that are out to save you. And again, I believe those are the ones that have been traumatized by something really bad. And now they have to put their, their what they think is their penance or whatever. I have no idea. But it always seems uh, uh, like it's from traumatic people. Yeah. I'm actually in the same boat as you. I 
back in California for the last 19 years. I've been living in an area that's very conservative, very Christian. And while the Christians I know would prefer it if I shared their belief system, they accept me for who I am. They accept me as being different. And, you know, I've, I've, I've been along to their churches. I have discussions with them. But this active suppression of, of our belief system is something that's alien to me, which is why I really wanted to talk to you today. It's something I'm still trying to wrap my head around. And um, you know, Heather Green wrote an article for this, and that's actually gone viral. And Fox News commented on it. So, yeah. <laughs> so this whole incident is is really um, getting a lot of interest from people, and I can see it taking off even more over the next few weeks. Right, right, and it's 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 unfortunate that that we have to see it like this because with Fox News, the way of course they sensationalized it a bit and they kind of twisted some of it, um, but yet when you look in the commentary part of what they um, what they wrote on the bottom, a lot of them that, that are saying, I'm a conservative, but they do have the right to live their own way without us trying to push anything onto them. And they have the right to be able to have their own space or their own time. I was surprised. And then of course there were some that were not, but there were a lot of them that were in support. So that was really surprising and nice. It, it almost seems like a lot of conservatives are, are torn between following the constitution and following the Bible. At the end of the day, the country was founded on the Constitution, so that's what we should be aiming at. Right. And the Constitution it has nothing to do with your religion. None of it. The, exactly. the country was not founded based on your religion. Um, it was actually based on the fact that you could come here and have any religion that you want, and it was exactly. supposed to be acceptable and and not be judged. The freedom of whatever it is, and I'm just like. When did where did all this stop? Why right? why is it there should be an actual separation of church and state? It ha, it should it be. should be a separation to the point where your religion should have nothing to do with decisions on how to run this country. And we're watching it play out of where everything is based on their religion. All the things that they're trying to do and put in place is based on their religion and and how they feel it should be. And it does not make any sense to me at all. You know, the I mean, we all know this, that the first people who came to this country were fleeing religious persecution. Right. You know, in England, from the Church of England and from France, fleeing persecution by the Catholics. And the thing that absolutely stuns me is that the descendants of those people who fled religious persecution, um, some of them at least, are now persecuting other people for their religious yep. beliefs. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because they don't know their own history. That's the thing. A lot of them don't read. They don't know their real history. They don't know, uh, and they don't want to learn it. Um, they're taking away the studies of it because the fact that someone outside of the country could come to this country and tell them their history and educate them on it is kind of sad because yeah. Americans should know their true history of what things are from. And they would not be speaking that the way that they're speaking right now. They would not be trying to, to, to stamp out everybody else's belief systems and religions, but there they are. So you, you've mentioned before that the evangelicals have disrupted your events in previous years. Mm -hmm. Do you think that disruption is escalating or is it roughly staying the same? It's definitely escalating, I believe. Um, they've gotten more aggressive and more in their own right, especially this is the first time I, it, it felt as if they felt they had more rights. They had more, um, I don't know what it was. It just felt as if they felt as if they were, they were more in the right than we were. And when I went online to, to look up what else was going on about things like this, I saw that people were planning on their, or Christians were planning on their websites. Um, the one that I saw was in Polk County, I think it's Kentucky, I'm not sure, Polk County. Um, and it, it's an event being held in November and they were already planning how they were gonna go and make sure that they do not get to have their event. Um, so they're planning things ahead as to how they're gonna um, 
counter us. And we're not even paying attention to them until they show up. And we have to stop doing that. We have to go into our events with the idea that they are coming in aggressive manner. So we have to be prepared for them. So I think we need to change how we do things. And it's the reason why I, I, I um, formed a group and there are a few of us in them. It's not meant to get big. It's a group that's private and it's meant for anybody who will who thinks that they can help in any way um, to help others not, um, nationally around here, around the country with their events, put things in place so that we can all help and watch each other's backs with our events because we have to see it as um, them because I've looked at their website and they are statistically placing themselves busing themselves to different locations to prevent pagan events. And it's not just pagan events. They were doing it to um, the Jewish group as well with their really? religious, whatever it is. I saw them, I, you know, I never thought they'd be doing it to the Jews as well because they're not such a minority religion, um, but ours is, but they were doing it there too. So they have set themselves up as judge, jury, and executioner for whatever it means. And that could mean they may get physical at some point. Who knows? So my whole thing to the, the city and, and the ward and the police officers when I want to meet with them is to let them know I am putting notice on it now. So if there's anything that ever happens in the future, I'm alerting everyone that we have tried and we are getting, we're doing everything we can. So we need protection. That's so, the way I'm seeing it. So, so you mentioned that, that some of these evangelicals were um, disrupting Jewish events. Does that smack of anti-Semitism to you, um, like white supremacy or something like that? Um, and and if so, uh, are, the, are the Jews doing anything to combat Christian disruption of their events? Um, I don't know exactly what occurred. I just know that they that they protested them. Um, I don't think it was in any way anti-Semitic as much as just same way that they treated us in terms of trying to proselytize and 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 dictate and tell us theirs is the only way and theirs is the only god and theirs the, you know what i mean i think that's what they were trying to do to them as well because from what i heard it was the same people or some of the same people so if that i'm just thinking if they did what they're doing to us then that's what I didn't I didn't get the impression that it was anti-Semitic. But I mean they may take it as such. I, I can almost understand them coming after pagans because in the writings of St. Paul, he actually does target pagans. But at the end of the day, Jesus Christ was a Jew. Christianity sprouted from, from Judaism. And there's lot, lots of discussion in the New Testament about. Um, whether pagans, when they convert to Christianity, should convert to Judaism first and then become Christian or whether they should just go straight to Christianity. I don't understand how they can possibly target and disrupt events by the Jews when their own religion stemmed from Judaism. It, it just seems totally wrong to me. Well, I don't, again, I don't think that they are looking at the historic value of it or the historic journey of it the way you are or the way I am or the way because we're educating ourselves about these different things um, because if you want to go back in, in history too when the pagans or the vikings or whomever had the first couple of christians in there they just kind of said oh they're just weird they're just christians we leave them alone and they left them be they didn't bother them or tell them you know you got to come to Valhalla and all the different things you know believe in our gods and they didn't do that they just simply said Leave them alone, let them do whatever they want. You know what I mean? And mm. here we are, the other it's the other way around, and here we are, and they're the ones doing it to us what we didn't do to them. It's yeah. like they're not willing to to learn of history and where things came from. They just dealing with the now. And the now is telling them this is what they need to do. And they very easily become missionaries according to their website. All of it, if you look at their website, is very odd. Like they're telling them they can become these missionaries. So they, and they're all young, 
not many of them are older um, and they're international. They're not just national, they're international. Wow. Um, one thing I noticed at the event was that the evangelicals behaved uneasily and almost left when the Santeria practitioners began drumming, dancing and singing around them. Do you think this could be a possible future strategy to have people drumming to drown out the evangelicals? Um, it could be, but then again, it drowns out what we have planned for the day. It defeats the purpose of other things. So to me, and I think some of it made them uncomfortable because if you notice, some of them were Spanish and a lot of them know Santeria when they see it. So no matter how Christian they are now, they still innately are not stupid. They know what certain things are. Yeah. So it made them uncomfortable. But I still think, yes, that's good. But again, we, they couldn't keep it up because they had to go perform. And we have other things throughout the day. They, that, none of that should be occurring, period. Because I, I remember visiting um, an event around 23rd Street or 26th Street, something like that on the west side. And it was an LGBTQ um, event. And they had rented the block just like I did, both the sidewalk and the street, just like I did. And they had a lot of bar barricades on both ends of the street and no one could enter, not even the sidewalk there, unless they were part of their event and they had to pay to come into their event on the street. And it's a public event. It's a street because they were saying that it's a public street. Yes, but that one is a public street too. And those people are dressed with literally little, little G-strings and stuff like that, males, females, whatever, you know, and they were able to protect their space. So I'm, I've contacted them. I sent them an email because I was just like, if they can do it, what are they doing that we are not doing? What, do, what are they inputting that we don't know about? And we can do the same thing. Whatever it is, they're allowed to block everywhere there. Um, one thing that really jumped out at me while you were talking was that they charged a small nominal entry fee. Um, would it be possible if, say, you charged 5 or $10 for people to come in and had security posted on either side, use the takings to pay those security people that the Christians wouldn't pay because they then think that that money would be going towards paganism? I, I don't know. Maybe that would keep them away. If they were just on the periphery, it wouldn't right. be as disruptive. The problem was that they came in on the footpath, yeah. stood in the middle of our event, and then actually followed one of the tents being moved into the middle of the street, right. which was yeah. blocked off, yeah. totally yeah. disrupting everything. Yeah, yeah. And in the past, they will move them away from there and have them across the street instead, and they didn't bother us once we called them, but they still had to be called. My whole thing now is I don't want to even have to call the police anymore. There has to be a way that we can have them be served papers, have them, as they show up, have them get served or what, whatever it is. I don't, think we, I don't think we should have to be calling the police anymore. I'm tired of it. There has to be other means or other things. Um, and we are working on a lot of that. I'm working with Lady Liberty League with Selena Fox. And yeah. we are working on a lot of things behind the scenes that we're putting into place. And we're trying to set up appointments to work with people and talk to them and figure out things. Um, so that's where we are right now. So nothing's resolved as yet, but we're making headway. Lady Liberty League takes on a, a lot of cases like this where you've got um, obvious discrimination. In this case, we were being discriminated against by the yes. Christians for not, for not being Christian. Right. And exactly. that's, that should not be happening in this day and age. No, it should not. A lot of things should not be happening in this day and age. And that's exactly what you witnessed. If you, in other words, if we, when we're telling people this, a lot of people are saying, well, you should have done this or well, you should have done that. We did all of those things. None yeah. of those things were effective. We did everything that was physically and mentally possible. And none of it was effective. So, 
we have to come up with legal means and what our rights are and what we can do and do similar to what that other event does. Whatever it is that they do, if we have to fit, see, I don't, I didn't, I don't like charging people for the street event, but if we have to do something like that to prevent it, then that's what we may have to do. So then if they have to come through on the sidewalk or on the street, then and, and pay us. The thing about it is, I'm not sure if that street, Astor Place is a very main, main street. Whereas the street that they are doing their event on is not such a main street. So I don't know if the, that's one of the differences. I am not sure exactly, which is what I want to find out. And if we have to if end, up, end, up, end up giving money, I mean, charging monies to, to come into it, which we've never wanted to, um, and use that to help pay security or whatever it is we have to do, then that's what we may have to do. I really hope we don't have to go there. I'm mm -hmm. hoping that we can come up with other means and, um, and ways to prevent it from getting to that part. Because I saw a lot of people come through who obviously weren't pagans. They come, came through, had a look at what was happening, checked out some of the stalls, possibly bought things from the vendors, and it was just something to do for them. And they're the sort yeah. of people you want coming along so right, that they right. can learn a little bit about paganism, possibly, you know, buy, buy something they wouldn't be able to, to readily get in other places. And everyone was really well behaved. It was just this small group of evangelical yeah. fanatics who, yeah. who spoiled okay. everything for, yeah. for everyone. And yeah. I mean, I, I, I was watching you um, dealing with them as best as you could. You had people standing beside you holding space. It was all, it was all very, um, very proper and dignified and there was no no aggression i mean you were you were forceful with what you were saying um but yet the guy with the megaphone was just screaming over the top of you totally disinterested in what you have to say and then he was there witnessing about his own journey i personally don't give a damn about his journey it's right. his journey he can keep it to himself right. you know he can write it up on a facebook post and if if ever one day i'm interested i'll read it up at my leisure i don't want it thrust down my throat Right. Sorry, yeah. I, I, and, sorry and I'm they, hijacking the interview again. No, 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 you're not. You're not. You, because you were part of it. So yeah. you're sharing what you went through and what you saw. But that's the truth of what we saw and went through. And they do this every year. But this year was the most aggressive that they had been um, and the most people that they had with them. Um, and they do the same thing in, in terms of everywhere on their body, either their buttons or somewhere has a camera. The whole thing is, is that they want it videotaped. That's why they have a YouTube channel and all the different things. And every year, if you go and you report the, the, the whatever video that they have up and you report it enough times, it, it gets taken down by YouTube. So right. you, you, you have to be methodical about everything that you're doing, but because they're recording everything. They know what, exactly what they're doing. They show up prepared and they said, well, when we, we will go when the cops come. Remember them saying that? They know yeah. exactly what to say and do. So we have to start treating them accordingly. They but are then the cops came them. and they lied. Huh? Yes, and Sorry. then the cops <laughs> came and suddenly that Christian mouth lied. Yeah. They outright lied. And, and I still don't understand why the cops did nothing. I mean, they saw that the situation was starting to to get a bit heated, they could have easily de-escalated the whole situation by asking the, the, the evangelicals to move over, stand in a corner without out of everyone's way. Yeah, and they didn't do any of that. They left them exactly there with the amplification, with everything, and said freedom of speech and walked away. And when I demanded yeah. their, their um, badges and names, um, uh, they were like, we'll write it. I said, no, thank you. I don't trust you. And I had one of us write it down. And I took it and I, because I want to go and report on them. And I gave it to the newspaper and everybody, their name, yeah. their badge numbers, everything, because, and I want to file the case against them. Yeah. Um, so I've kind of half asked you this before. Do you think there's any legal recourse to prevent the evangelicals from attending future events? It seems to me that religious freedom is a basic human right it's acknowledged by the united nations and our constitution what what sort of legal recourse do we have 
Well, that's what I'm going through right now to find out all of it legally written down and everything and what we can do to enforce it. Um, because the cops um, initially said that that's what they need. They need us to get what they can do to enforce. And um, along with that is we did not before have their names and their website and their address and all these different things. Now we do. So now from what was said to me, we might be able to do an order of protection and a restraining order or whatever else we need to do so that at least they'll be able to stay a hundred yards away from us or whatever it is. So as long as I'm there and I'm there all day. So, yeah. you know, and or even from our temple or from our whatever it is, um, our address for the temple is in that location as well. So with it, I want to find out what is it, what are our rights and how can we enforce it? And if we can have it where police officers stay there all day, that there were a couple of times where um, year where um, they actually stayed there all day and those Christians left and they did not come back. So whatever it is that we have to do to find out if we have the police presence all day, then we wouldn't have to hire security. Um, and then we would leave it uh, free for everybody to be able to attend. That's the whole idea of a street festival. You know, the you know, only reason the only reason they charge for theirs on 26th Street is because of the type their event is more of a kink event. So they've got, you know, mostly nude people and all the different things. So they they have, you know, things up barricading off and all the different things because of all the nudity and all the other things they've got going on. Um, because it's more of a kink BDSM event. Um for privacy sake. So I don't think I don't want to have to do that because it would lessen the amount of people that we have there. That's for the vendors and all the different things, you know. Um, so I really hope we don't have to do that. Um, but we will have to do what we got to do if things um, it, depending on what we find out legally. Yeah, I wasn't there all day. I turned up maybe a couple of hours after it started. But apart from the evangelicals, everyone was really well behaved yes the, the, so the, nice. the vibe the, the, the vibe was great um everyone walking through was smiling they were having a good time the vendors were all friendly and you know there was great entertainment on it had the makings of a really enjoyable event and and yeah. the, the evangelicals came along and spoiled it for all of us yeah yeah it was it you know, was it, it was really done well all day like you know like other than that people were I know, enjoying so, themselves so I, I feel you with um with, with your um thoughts about the security guards because if it wasn't for them there was zero need for security guards everyone was yeah. so well behaved it was it was it was a lovely day it was like yeah. this sort of day that you know if you've got kids and all that bring them along they can have a good yeah. time maybe we can have face painting for the kids something like that so right. so families can can make a day of it. Um, that's what usually so, happens. That's what usually happens. So I was wondering, for the benefit of anyone listening to this podcast, if they want to get involved and help out some way, um, what could they possibly do to help out? Um, it depends. Um, if anyone legally knows of any means that they can know to help us, whether it's a lawyer, um, um, because we don't have, we're, we're, we're a minority temple or minority religion. So we don't have the kind of monies to 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 bank behind us um, to pay for things and big security and all the different things that I wish we could. We are a, a small temple and we do not have a lot of money like that. Um, and we fundraise a lot to give to charities like how we gave to St. Jude and to Feed America and to City Harvest um, because that's part of the 501c3 status that we have. Um, Nonprofit. That's what the five hundred one c three is. Because sometimes people ask me that. I want to make sure that I say that part. Um, but yes, if they want to help in any way um, or know any, you know, we even had people say, "Why don't you have an MC chapter be there?" Or, or um, that because sometimes they help the underdog kind of a thing, um, you know, or anything that they think that can help to help with the situation. We welcome anyone who thinks that they have any suggestions or means of helping 
We've had a couple of military personnel that has contacted us saying they will help us if, if they can. Um, so they can reach out to me um, at uh, charmedbystar at hotmail.com. And that's charmed, B-Y, star with two R's at hotmail.com. They can um, contact us via wiccanfamilytemple.org in the contact sheet. They can do it there. Um, and we have, like I said, formed a, a small group. It's not meant to grow big. It's just meant to be, everyone has to be helping on figuring out a way for us to um, help nationally, how we can help one another um, prevent this happening to a lot of us because it's not just us it's happening to it's happening to a number of people around the country so if we can help if we can create the kind of um uh, means that could help not just us but others around the country then that's what we would like to try to do so anybody in any part of the country know that you can help because we have zoom we've got other means of different of talking to one another and seeing what we can do to help um, if they know of an mc chapter or something like that that be willing to help we welcome it because sometimes just having you know the fear of someone else that's there they see a lot of motorcycle people they may back off my husband used to know those people i don't know them anymore because he passed away in the 90s mm -hmm. you know in 1991 I'm sorry um, yeah, and, and, you know, so I know a lot of them that were just cool people that would stand behind you and let you know that we're here if you need us, kind of a thing. Um, so, you know, any help that people think that they can give, we would appreciate it, and it's all welcomed. I'm so glad that you just stated that, um, that you're asking for help from all over America, because this isn't just an issue that affects New York City. It right. may be starting in New York City and it may be getting more and more prominent in New York City, but it, it feels like it's going to spread to other states as well, other events. And, you know, we could have pagan events disrupted all over America, which would be absolutely horrible. Yeah. You know, to be honest, I've only been to one other event where this has taken place. It was in, in Southern California a few years ago, but the evangelicals who came stood at the corner, like we had a park, and there was a footpath around the park. So they stood in the corner out on the streets and you know, they were noisy and disruptive, but they didn't actually come into the event. They were much better behaved. Right. And I mean, if they want to do that, you know, we can put up with that. We can just move away from where they are. But once they start coming through the event, handing out brochures and going through their megaphones, it just spoils the whole event for everyone. Yeah. And I can see this spreading. Through, through all of America if it's not nipped in the bud. So I'm yeah. so glad that you're putting out the call to everyone. Yeah, yeah, because I, I went and the minute I saw how aggressive they got and I did the research online and I was like, oh my goodness, they're going after other groups as well. And I'm like, we need to prevent this because some of them, the first thing some of them said to me was, why don't you move your event indoors? I'm like, why? Why should we move our event indoors and pay way more money thousands of dollars that I don't have to, to pay to do an, an indoor event when we were having, this is the event we are having. We are having it there for a reason. It's our community. We have the right to be there and we're not gonna let anyone move us away from what we fought so hard to get. And I don't see why we need to move when they shouldn't even be there. So I, I'm, I'm puzzled by them asking me that. And we've had people tell us uh, Mystic South they, they had theirs in a the hotel and they showed up there. Um, Hexfest in New Orleans had theirs in a the hotel and they showed up in the hotel with flyers on the, all the, um, the, the bedroom doors and everything like that. So it really is irrelevant where we are. They simply do not want, do not want us existing and having any of these events. So if that's the case, that means what? What do we do then? Hide, don't do anything. We've had people saying, on some of the comments were like, this is the reason I don't go to events, pagan events, because even though I'm pagan, I, I don't want to go because they don't want the Christians. I'm, I'm afraid they'll come after us. Why should we be afraid? They don't have the right to do what they're doing. We have the right to be able to feel that at anywhere in the United States, anybody that's having their event, if our groups of people show up in the same manner and we treat it in the same manner as we want to do it for New York, be letting them know you're on notice. 
we have the right to be here just as much as you do. And we are not taking this like that. It's simple. Okay, um, I think we're starting to run out of time. Yes. Yes, um, so, minutes. Okay, so I was going to ask you, um, are there any other projects that you're currently engaging in that you'd like to let people know about, uh, apart from the, the whole evangelical disruptive thing? Um, which is fast, 2023 is going to be bigger and better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're, doing, we're doing even more. Um, we, we may cut down on the amount of days, but what we have planned is making New York more of the event. Like, I don't know, maybe ghost tours. I don't know, different things that we're trying to do and, and, and um, bring in to make it even more interesting and even better. Um, like I said, they're not stopping us. They're just making us more. <laughs> do more and be more so check us out at witchesfestusa.org and it's spelled w-i-t-c-h-s as in sam f as in frank frank sorry e-s-t-u-s-a.org okay so you also have your own temple um if people want to contact you to learn more about the work that you do in your temple and possibly engage your services or tuition from how should they contact you um, they can go to the website and they, they, they could click on contact and it will take them, you know, we get lots of messages that way, wiccanfamilytemple.org. Um, yeah, and pretty much we, you can get to us many different ways and, you know, we get the messages and we try to get back to everyone. We get it from the military. A lot of the military is contacting us and working with us because of the reverend status and all the different things to help them back and forth and the prisoners. Um, uh, between the military and the prison, um, uh, the prisons and things like that, a lot of that has been coming up lately. So we have a lot of different things going on, um, and we are trying to to cover everything and do everything as much as we can. I'm glad you've got all these people reaching out to you. You've got the military, you've got people within the prison system. So it sounds like you're definitely getting the word out to a lot of people. Yeah, it does. So I think we've just about run out of time. So Star, thank you so much for coming onto the show and letting us get to know you a little bit better. And I wanted to wish you success with all your future endeavors. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. And I appreciate you guys inviting me on the show. Uh, it's appreciated and getting to speak our part. Um, and to just leave, let people know we are not giving up. We are here to stay and they are going to have to back off period. It, it's been absolutely fantastic having you on the show. And this is an effect. This is something that affects everyone, everyone who's part of a religious minority. So it's not just pagans. You've mentioned that the Jews have been targeted as well. And I can imagine small religious groups, you know, Zoroastrians and the like also being targeted by these people who are intolerant of anyone whose belief system doesn't mirror theirs. Yes. And that to me is very wrong. So it is, it's thing. very wrong. Totally against the principles on which this country was founded. Absolutely. So <laughs> I think that's just about it. So thank you so much, Star, and um, have a great evening and, and best of luck with, with all your work. Thank you guys very much. You take care. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Before Bye. we close, uh, Star, there's a service that the Bar Association offers. I've used it in New York, in New Jersey, and in Pennsylvania, where for it was $30 last time I used it. It might be $5 more expensive now. Uh, you have a top notch lawyer in a particular uh, section of law that will answer any questions you have for half an hour. So, okay. uh, Wow. You can ask to speak to a lawyer about just the issues that you brought up, and they will give you the best advice in half an hour. I usually write down everything that comes into my head, no matter how uh, stupid it sounds. If I, don't know, if I don't know the answer. I'll write it down and, and ask them. And that's been very helpful. And usually um, something they say or something they, they do will take care of the problem. So uh, th that's a resource. And also the American Civil Liberties Union. Yeah, I, I contacted the ACLU. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you to both of you. This was an excellent and very thought-provoking and necessary show. Um, I wish you well in all your endeavors. And uh, thank you 
listeners uh, for tuning in. This will be up uh, tomorrow morning on uh, YouTube. So good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Hercules. Thanks, Doc. Thank you both.